Good evening, Dolos. William Nectan, a pleasure as always. Him? <clears throat> oh, yes, the child is also here. In the last week, three boats have sunk into Sargasso Sea. Oh, so sad, but life goes on, yes. Two trawlers went down and a solo yachtsman. We managed to rescue him. Heartwarming story. If there is a medal for retrieving foolish yachtsmen, I hope you receive it. Why are you bothering me? Those aboard the trawlers reported seeing a purple fish before they sank. The yachtsman mentioned the same fish. The yachtsman said the fish was bad luck. Do you know anything about this? I know many things about many fish. Could you be more specific? Ah, very specific. There, the bad luck fish. So it's a giant monster fish? This drawing is actual size. Oh. According to the stories, the bad luck fish causes ships to sink. Superstitious nonsense, of course. But the legend goes back to the very first recorded sinking in the Sargasso Sea in 1521. Uh, the first recorded sinking was in 500 BC. Uh, tell the child he's wrong. According to a text in our possession, a Phoenician treasure ship carrying precious artifacts sank in 500 BC. In the exact same spot this latest yacht sank. Very bad luck. Mr. Dolos, this fish is our only clue. If we can work out why ships sink in the Sargasso, we can save lives. Yes. Uh, wait here a moment while I retrieve something. Where is he going? Maybe he's coming back with more information. with more information. Nope. He's gone after the treasure ship in the Sargasso Sea. Yep. Can I gloat lots if we have to rescue him? Absolutely. My family are explorers. We have been for generations. While others look up to the stars, we know there are an infinite number of things that shine in the darkness below. There are things lurking in the seas that long ago vanished into men. My family are explorers, and we explore the deep. Sinking at 22 degrees north latitude and 66 degrees west longitude. I am at the location of the treasure ship. Where are you? Stalled. Our engines are clogged with seaweed. I need a salvage crew right now! Our boat ain't going anywhere, Dolos. Ridiculous! How could a boat be paralyzed by seaweed? Just bad luck, I guess. <laughs> Activated distress beacon has just gone off. Ha! <laughs> Dolos. Where is he? The exact coordinates of the sunken ship. And Fontaine, go get him and have fun. Fish sink your boat. <laughs> the only bad luck is you two being here. So you don't want us to rescue you? <laughs> Maybe I do. <laughs> we'll take you aboard the Aranax. Underwater? No, that is unnatural and disturbing. I will stay here. <laughs> Are you scared of going underwater? I am scared of nothing. Come on. Since we're already picking up one grumpy-looking passenger, 
we may as well pick up another, as a sample. Fontaine, are you sure you want to bring a bad luck fish on board? And nobody knows about the species. We should study it while we can. But all the boats that have sunk? There's always a rational explanation. Huh. An annoying child who says something almost sensible. How rare. Oh, oh! I will remain here, where I can quickly escape from this giant underwater metal death trap. And can you bring Dolos to the bridge immediately? We need to talk. I have far more important things to do than socialize with your parents. Or you. Especially you. Hmm. Are you planning on stealing our rover and looking for sunken Phoenician treasure? <laughs> Dad. This could take a while. Drag him if you have to. I want to know exactly how his boat sank. I'll try, but I think he's scared. I'm scared of nothing. Hmm. Any debris or solid objects on sonar that Dolos might have collided with? Nothing but seaweed. Bad luck fish, huh? <laughs> Let's see if we can find what you really are in this. Huh? Ha! That was just a case of poorly stacked books. And a bit of clumsiness on my part. But definitely not bad luck. Right, Jeffrey? Looks like the bad luck fish are taking an interest in the Aronites. Will, they're not bad luck fish. That's absurd. They have all the luck of regular fish. Did we hit something? No, I don't know what this is. Here, Fontaine. But Mom. Some systems are offline. Navigation, heating. Lighting. We have to get that fish off the Aranax. Fontaine, you can't possibly believe that this was caused by a bad luck fish. I didn't, but then we brought one on board, and five minutes later we were stuck on the bottom of the sea. That seems like bad luck to me. Look, we need to focus our energy on restarting the engines. You're right. You and I will work on the engines. Fontaine, take care of that fish. Not you two. I'm not saying the fish is bad luck. I'm just saying I want it off our sub. We should be searching for the treasure, not wasting our time. We're with... gonna rescue my family. You can help or you can complain. 
I choose to complain. I choose to say, be quiet. I'm concentrating. I choose not to take orders from Ow, children. Hey! Oh, I keep doing this. Oh, wait, oh, you know you can't drive. Coincidence, Fontaine. The ocean floor here is unstable. Do you think it could collapse entirely? I think we should find a way to surface as quickly as possible. Yeah, just stop it, Dolos! We're going the wrong way! You are going the wrong way! I am going my way! Look! The bad luck fish! You are trying to distract me! I only stop for Phoenician treasure! Get back! 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 Dolos, you have to listen to me! Are you talking about treasure? No! Then, no, I don't. Okay, restarting engines. That seems like a good sign. So, let's get out of here. We're not moving. Well, our ballast still isn't venting. We need to release water, we're too heavy. The release pipe is blocked? It must be, which means we need someone on the outside. The ocean floor will be blocking the moon pool door, but there are other ways. I'll head out. Yes. <laughs> I've got you now. Whoa! Uh, it's not bad luck. Just a matter of time before I tripped over this mess. Aw, oh, poor Jeffrey. The bad luck fish sure has a crush on you. Huh. Maybe we can help each other out. Well, we're stuck. <gasps> not good. This is not good! <gasps> fish, it's true. It's all true. They are bad luck. They are cursed! Stop panicking. Think of the treasure. It seems outweigh your fear of being underwater. My fear of being stuck in here with you is even greater! Ant, your father could use your help clearing the ballast release pipe. We are stuck. You are on your own. <laughs> Ignore him. We'll get out of this. We'll see you soon. Rover out. There's dive gear here. We can get outside and cut through the seaweed. We? Out there? Ha! I pass. <sighs> Fine. Me. No! No! The fish have caused us to fly! Just calm down. We need to flood the rover to open the canopy. Take in this laser. We can still talk to each other through the masks. Do we have to? Faster! You could try being a little nicer. I tried that once. It was not profitable. Whoa! You don't scare me. You're just a fish. Dolos, try the engines. That button there. Yes, now pull back on the throttle. Dolos, pull back on the throttle. Dolos, come back. Come back, or search for valuable Phoenician artifacts. Hmm, such a difficult decision. Bye-bye. Dolos! <laughs> the solar ski tubes aren't as smooth as the moon pool, but they do the trick. Oh. What is it? Talk to me, Will. The pipe is bent and blocked. It may be brittle. Heat it before you bend it back. The air is coming up from below the seabed. It looks like it could collapse at any moment. Then work fast. <laughs> Ah! Ah! The 
gas bubbles. They're methane. Are you okay? I'm fine. Methane keiko. Highly flammable. It makes sense. Centuries of rotting seaweed. Methane forms under the seafloor. And as the bubbles rise, they turn into foam. Mostly air. And air can't support boats. We just discovered why all those ships went missing. Will? I think we're about to join them. Stupid seaweed. How am I supposed to find a shipwreck in all of this? You're lost, Dolos. You need to come back for me. <gasps> this is your fault. Don't go away. How is this my fault? I was not talking to you, child. Uh, I'm turning on a beacon so you can come find me. Ha! Unless you are a sunken Phoenician treasure ship, I have no interest in where you are. Uh. Now, where am I? Huh. It worked, Will. I'm venting the ballast. But the Aranax isn't rising. Kiko, we're running out of time. Gotcha. <laughs> Bad luck, fish. Your luck just ran out. I am not lost. I am not lost. What? Oh, that's impossible! I'm going around in circles! Ah! You, you did this! Go away! Go! You can't blame the fish, Dolos. This isn't bad luck. You chose to look for the treasure. You chose to take the rover. And you chose to abandon me. Now you're lost, and you've got no one to blame but yourself. There's no such thing as bad luck. You just made a bad choice. Huh? Ah! Ah! Hello, Mr. Dolos. You came back for me! And now I'm making a choice to... let you drive. Now you made a good choice, and good things will happen. We'll find the treasure? That's not what I meant. You will stop talking. Okay, the ballast is empty. I'm gonna try the engines again. It's no good. I'm giving the engines everything, but the ship won't budge. We've done everything we can, Keiko. We may have to abandon the Aranax. Is this as bad as it looks? Very bad. There's no treasure down here at all. The Aranax is stuck in the ground, and the gas underneath is methane. We're sitting on a bomb here, Ant. Hmm. Dad, you know how you have reservations about some of my crazier ideas? This one you're gonna hate. I hate it already, and I haven't even heard it. The methane bubbles form below the surface, right? Uh-huh. If we wait until a really big one forms... Like that one? Yes, perfect! That will temporarily deplete the methane underneath. And? Then we ignite what's left. Okay, I've heard it now, and yes, I hate it. Did you say ignite? Ant is right. It will loosen the silt and free the Aranax. Your plan for our freedom is a massive explosion? I did say no one would like my plan. Mom, I ejected the bad luck fish out of the solar ski tubes. Our bad luck is gone. We could fall through the seabed at any second, and Ant is planning to save us by blowing us up. Okay, so maybe not. Ant, it's time. Keiko, fire up the engines. Igniting the methane in three... two... one!
everyone back on board. Let's get out of here. I just want to point out that we totally didn't get blown up. I think it's safe to say that there's no such thing as the bad luck fish. We know why the ships sink now. We can tell all vessels to avoid this area. And I'm guessing those purple fish thrive in methane-rich water. Hey, Fontaine, ever since I stopped being superstitious and started making better decisions, I've been nothing but good luck. <laughs> I even made a new friend. Oh, don't touch me. I wasted my time coming here. There is no treasure. You're wrong. We found the best kind of treasure there is. Friendship. Oh. I feel sick. Oh, that's okay. I'll look after you, good buddy. This has to stop. Pyrosome to Aranax. Nectins, are you reading me? Commander Pyrosome, to what do we owe this pleasure? I have a question for Keiko. For me? I know it's unprecedented, but you're the most accomplished marine biologist I know. Was that flattery? I don't flatter. Ever. The scientific arm of the World Oceans Authority is very concerned about some sea life we've been monitoring with trackers. Once, I put a tracker on a sea snail for a whole year. We know. It moved three meters. It was science. These dots are the individuals being tracked. But for each individual, there can be hundreds in a school. They're all grouping together? And we have no idea why. Hmm. What sort of fish? All kinds. Bass, rays, and not just fish. Dolphins, turtles, seals. They've got nothing in common. Maybe they overcame their differences and formed a football team. At first, we thought they'd all been sucked into a fast, warm water current, but no. Sorry, football is silly. Water polo, maybe. And be serious. Okay, so they're running away from something, like a fontaine? Ugh. Commander, how can a turtle travel as fast as a dolphin? That is the question. Hmm. Commander Pyrozone, we'll take the case. Well, I only wanted advice. Sorry, you got us intrigued. It's too late now. We're in. All right! My family are explorers. We have been for generations. While others look up to the stars, we know there are an infinite number of things that shine in the darkness below. There are things lurking in the seas that long ago vanished into myth. My family are explorers, and we explore the deep. I'm getting a signal from the WOA trackers now. Amazing. I've never seen so many species of fish that close together. It's like they're right on top of each other. That's weird. Let's ask the other fish expert. Please. You're asking Jeffrey? Of course. Jeffrey, why would perfectly sensible fish from all different species run away from home together? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, Jeffrey has a theory. He's a fish. Exactly, with unique insights into fish motivation. And Jeffrey favors the circus theory. They ran away to join the circus? Of course. Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. The group have slowed down at a commercial tuna farm, about five nautical miles ahead. Hmm. Maybe they're all hungry. Oh, silt everywhere. What could have churned up the water like this? I'm not sure, but our visibility is limited. Something else on sonar. Slowing engines. The signal's gone. No, it's back. Huh, that's weird. It just moved. Maybe it's all these dirt particles messing with the signal. Let's not take chances. Coming to port, 10 degrees. Hmm. Up ahead. What? Nets everywhere! Look out! Hold on! Ah! Ah! There's more! Full reverse! Brace yourself! 
yourselves. That can be a good sound. It's the propellers. That's it. We're officially dead in the water. What could have done this? Maybe the tuna who were kept here did it. The tuna all just ran away to join the migration? Yes, a massive tuna jailbreak. Okay, big pull. Now. Come down, Jeffrey. Everything's fine. Nectans, we have a strange development. Another cluster of sea creatures is forming. Again, it's all different kinds. Another cluster? That's interesting. Where? Around 20 nautical miles southeast of you. Will, you and Fontaine keep following the original group. They're moving slower now. You should be able to catch up to them quickly. Right. We'll try to get a look at this new group. Thank you. You'll be okay? We're good to go. Wow, these new guys are fast, but the Aranax is faster. We should have a visual in about six minutes. Wait, our group is diving fast. Hold on. I don't get this. Some of the creatures in this group can't possibly dive this deep. Maybe they have a submarine. Uh, that's not a serious suggestion. Will, your group has stopped descending. They've turned back. Roger that, we're monitoring. In fact, they're heading straight for us. Keep your eyes peeled. Sonar's locked on a solid object. What object? I don't know, but it's closing fast. They're coming straight at you. Turn, Will, now! The animals aren't traveling together. They were eaten! Megalodon! Ah! Aranax to Rover, come in! Aranax to Rover! Dad, come on, answer! Aranax to Rover, come in! Will, Fontaine, we're coming. Talk to me! Where are they? Uh, 2.1 nautical miles ahead, bearing 117. We're closing fast. Robert Aranex, can you hear me? Dad, Will, why weren't you answering? We're inside a Megalodon, holding on to its gills. We're slipping. Full thrusters. <laughs> Stable for the moment. But there's a constant flow of water pressing against us, Mom. We can't fight against it. We can't force our way out. We'll be there in 30 seconds. We'll try to hold on. If we keep slipping. Mom, please hurry. Should be getting close to a visual. Incredible! So cool! It's immense! Maybe 40 meters long! We're coming up on it now! Understood. What have you got? That thing? 
should have been extinct for 2.6 million years. Something practical, Ant. Uh, oh, its closest living relative is the Great White Shark. Megalodon was the single biggest predator on the planet. Uh, we're listening here. Was that supposed to cheer us up? Related to the Great White. Great Whites are constantly moving, remember? So what? So the water flow isn't gonna stop! Which means we can't get out? Unless we can stop the Megalodon from moving. Listen, these things would never expect anything to challenge them head on. I don't think crashing into it is gonna stop it from swallowing half our family. No, we turn off our lights, then come at it head on, fast. And at the last second, we blast it with the lights, strobes, everything. So we'd shock it and stop it without hurting it. And hopefully, the rover would be able to get out. Uh-huh. <sighs> it's a big gamble. It sounds like the only gamble we have. Okay, and turn off the lights. I'll get us ahead of this creature. We both need to time this perfectly, so be ready, Ant. Accelerating. I'll wait till the last second. Will and Fontaine, when it stops, hopefully it will open its mouth, then gun your engine. Okay, Fontaine, be ready to let go with the arms. I'm ready. Get ready, Ant. Huh? Proximity alert! What? There's something else out there! Mom, it's another group! It's another Megalodon! Okay, new plan. We get a steel cable. Super strong, excellent choice. And we loop it around the Megalodon. Once it's fastened, we reverse the Aranax and bring the shark to a stop. Wait, wait, wait. You want to lasso a Megalodon? It sounds crazy, doesn't it? Um, yeah. But it's times like these I know are related. It's brilliant, come on. to get that close, uh, to loop it over. You're not going out. In the Magnite, it's the strongest. I'm going along with your plan here, but you need a knight. I'll go out. Mom, you need to pilot the Aranax. I'm not that skilled, and Jeffrey is an amateur at best. It's hard to drive a submarine when you don't have opposable thumbs. No one pilots better than you, so it has to be me out there. Oh, I absolutely hate it. Dad and Fontaine need it to happen, now. What if the other Megalodon gets involved? It's clearly protecting its mate. If it spots me, I'll get out of there. <sighs> Please stay safe. This better work, big guy. Will, I 
I'm leaving this channel open. You'll need to move fast when we do this. Uh, we have a giant shark stomach behind us as motivation. We'll move faster than we ever have before. Count on it. Excellent. Then we'll release the cable before the animal gets hurt. And let's do this. Getting into position now. I'm moving closer. Your speed is good. Ready to drop. Let's count it down, Ant. We need to time it just right. Okay. Dropping in five, four, four three, three, two, one. <laughs> Uh-oh. He knows I'm here. Do we have an even bigger night? Be ready. Stay alert. It's not like I'm relaxing here, Dad. Ant, are you all right? Am I all right? I'm riding an extinct mega monster. This could be the single greatest moment of my life. Ant, half of your family is about to be eaten. And working on saving you. Ant! What's happening? I'm okay. I'm okay. I just have to. Okay. This isn't good. Ant! What happened? I'll get the Megalodon off your tail. No, Ant! We can't keep up with the descent. We'll have to lock onto the Aranax magnetically. Do it as quickly as you can, Fontaine. We've got one shot at this. Steady. Steady. We're out of position. Can you keep us straight? I'm trying, but it's nearly impossible with one engine down. We're out of time. Lock on! Aunt, 
Wait! What are you doing? Don't stop! It's right on top of you! I know. I have a giant set of razor-sharp teeth chasing me, Mom. I may as well use them. Come on, big guy. Don't I look tasty? That's right. Come get me. Sam! back inside. Let's leave these two alone. <laughs> these pictures were taken inside the Megalodon's mouth? What can I say? We're thorough. We've determined they're a male and a female. They were meeting to mate. They just needed to eat a lot before that. And they really don't care what they eat. Whereas I'm very discerning. And Jeffrey huh, is totally picky. Unlike Great Whites, these creatures work together. They may even partner for life. But they're supposed to be extinct. It's not the first time humanity thought a creature was extinct when it wasn't. True. But why haven't we found Megalodons before this? Technology improves all the time. And maybe they usually stay in secluded areas. Very secluded. The tracker signals have vanished completely. That's good. They must have returned to somewhere very deep. But what can we do if they ever come back? Do you really want to think about that? Aranax out. <laughs> what can we do? Personally, I never want to have to use myself as a giant shark lure again. They've lived here untouched and untroubled for millions of years. All we can do is be ready if we encounter them again and stay out of their way. The sea is their home. We should respect the biggest predators in the ocean. Who knows what they could be protecting us from? And once that dolphin sound is recorded, it passes through my analytical filters. Don't tell Ant. He'll want a Jeffrey translator. He's already asked for one. But my machine isn't that sophisticated. I still need to compare observed behavior with the different sound variations. Just like music. Pitch, frequency, duration? Exactly! Didn't I say you'd be the perfect assistant? Did you hear that? Mm, your younger ears pick up higher frequencies than mine. So that's a no. Something spooked them. Maybe that sound? Let me turn it up. I'm still not hearing anything. Are you sure that... Did you hear that? What? My family are explorers. We have been for generations. While others look up to the stars, we know there are an infinite number of things that shine in the darkness below. There are things lurking in the seas that long ago vanished into myth. My family are explorers, and we explore the deep. Okay, just keep the volume down. This is the last speaker set we've got. Oh, incredible. The bloop. What's a bloop? It's one of the most mysterious mysteries ever. How do you not know the bloop? Huh, I don't get out a lot. In 1997, there was a sound underwater. It baffled everyone who heard it. They called it the bloop. The bloop was heard and recorded all over the Pacific Ocean. Then suddenly, it vanished. I found the one from 1997 online. Listen. They're virtually the same. <gasps> it's a GSM. Let me guess, giant sea monster? <laughs> what else? Ant, most scientists believe the original bloop was the sound of icebergs cracking. Those scientists never proved anything and lacked my overactive imagination. And given we're off Papua New Guinea... There's a noticeable lack of icebergs. The 
this bloop is less than 20 kilometers away. I wonder if it's connected to that. These marks are fresh. Proceed with caution, Ed. We don't know what's out there. Oh, I so do. giant sea monster dragged its equally giant prey from there to its fearful lair. That way! I hate to burst your bubble, Ant, but these marks are way too precise and even to be drag marks. It looks more like... <sighs> That's no bloop. It's a deep sea mining machine. It's gonna eat the rover! Ant, it's too late. Don't do it! No! Ant! You're cutting it too close! Huh? Ah! 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 Come on, come on, come on! <sighs> Whoa! Ant, back to the Aranax. Now. Uh, uh-huh. And I should, in the future, remember that I'm far harder to replace than the rover. Oh! And the listen to instructions thing. <laughs> Never, ever risk your life like that again. That mining machine is just eating everything. We've got to stop it. We're trying. Your father's talking to the World Oceans Authority right now. And there's nothing they can do. This area is not a marine reserve. <sighs> but there's a bloop out there. Did it just hear you? The tone changed. It's not just one sound. Come on out, GSM, wherever you are. It's not gonna come when it's called, Ant. It's a sea monster, not a dog. Ha! So you admit it's a sea monster. Ugh. That last transmission came from within one kilometer. Nectins, my name's Bruce Alba from Deep Sea Mining. We need you to clear this area. We're extracting rare earth minerals. And you need to stop. We have reason to believe there's something quite unique in the area. We heard a bloop. A bloop? You mean that iceberg sound from decades ago? No one knows what made the sound. And there are no icebergs in the area. It may be coming from a living creature. We need you to stop your machine until we can locate the source. I'm not shutting down this entire operation for a hypothetical creature. If you can give me evidence instead of theories, I'll think about it. He'll think about it? Everyone spread out and try to cover as much ground as you can. We need to find the source of the bloop. Stay alert, Jeffrey. We're looking for a giant sea monster. What is it? The bloop. Professor Fiction, did you hear that? Loud and clear. And I can triangulate the location. Turn to the left and head up that rise. Track marks. That machine went by here before. <laughs> Coral pit down there, but no giant sea monsters. Uh, Professor, are you sure this is the right place? I'm sure. Keep looking, Ant. So far, nothing giant or even sea monster ish. Antazoa cantus. Get it? Antazoa is already the word for coral, and cantus is a vocal ensemble. Does every new species we discover have to be named after you? Don't be ridiculous. Only the really interesting ones. Well, this certainly is interesting. But where's the sound coming from? We need to take a closer look. How? 
None of us could fit more than a hand in there. One of us can fit. Ant, your head is huge. You can't fit. My head is a perfectly acceptable size. But I'm not talking about me. Let's get back to the Aranax and set up the fish cam. I'd suggest you hurry back, Ant. Why? What's wrong? The machine is making another track. And the next pass is directly in line with the organism. Jeffrey, your time to be a hero. I got your message. You want me to stop operations because of Coral. Communicating Coral. Antisoacantis, though nobody likes that name yet. It's a scientific miracle. Coral, the docks. It's definitely making sound. Sound is not communication. Do you have any proof that it's aware? I may have an idea. We'll get you proof, but please, the coral is in the direct path of your machine. You have to stop it. The cost of this operation is astronomical. I can't shut down because maybe coral is making noises. You get me cold, hard proof. We don't have much time. Ant, take Jeffrey into fish camp out there and find out how it's making that noise. This is your idea? Starting a band? The bloop varies in pitch, volume, and tone. What does that seem like? Uh, music! I'm gonna play my own version of the bloop through the Aranax's external speakers. If the choral responds... Then it's trying to communicate! And that proves it's sentient. Let's hope it likes my music. Yeah! I mean, statistically, someone has to, right? Maybe a different key? Go in! In! Explore everywhere! Ah, good move. Psych yourself up. Get in the zone. And? Is Jeffrey in place? Uh, he's getting in the zone. We don't have time. The machine is already coming toward us and will eventually lead to the coral. Let's slow it down. What? How? Come on, Jeffrey. I have faith in you! Yes! That a boy! Ready? Let's do this. shouldn't, uh, but we're close. Just give us more time. Ant, do you have it? Jeffy's inside, but the coral isn't singing. We have to make it sing. See, the sound is coming from there. Somehow, it forces the water through tiny tubes. And different sized tubes make different notes, like a flute. Something actually appreciates your musical ability. What is that? That's the proof you were after. Turn off your machine. What? Let's not forget, what we call coral is millions of organisms operating as a single colony. Millions of organisms making music together. Incredible. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. And you won't see it again, unless you turn off your machine. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Pair it down! Now! What? How? What's happening? My engineers are saying there was some sort of explosion inside the machine. The rover arm. 
We've lost remote control. And we can't power the machine down. We can't stop it. I can't hold this much longer. Tell me you found a way to change its course, Professor. I don't think we can change its course. We have to turn it off. How? An EMP. What? An electromagnetic pulse. A burst of energy that nullifies any electrical device. Where are we gonna get an EMP? Oh, I always have one on me. Uh, why? I'm an inventor. I created my first EMP right after I accidentally created my first rebellious toaster. If the EMP is our only option, then we have to take it. Do it. We'll deal with the consequences at this end. Okay, Ant. The EMP will need to go on the front panel. So, just above the giant spinning blades of death? Yes! Um, try to avoid those. It's on! Okay, I can activate the EMP remotely, but get well clear of it, or it'll knock out your communications. I'm losing it! Oh, Do it now, Fiction! I just have to figure out how much power to give the EMP. Give it everything! Okay, I'll take it all the way to 11. It goes to 11? Why not 10? <laughs> I've never been great with numbers. Uh, that's reassuring. Firing in three, two, five. Fiction! <laughs> One. Oh, uh, there's something I forgot to mention. Yes, Professor, it worked. Oh, it worked on Mom and Dad, too. Yes. Uh, that's the bit I forgot. Mom's okay. Checking on Dad. <laughs> so I guess we did it. Edition. And you didn't think to mention this earlier? I'm the project manager, not an engineer. So all we've succeeded in doing is knocking out Mom and Dad? Where is this backup power? It's in the very center of the machine. I'm sending you the latest schematics. <laughs> there! We have to get inside the machine and uncouple it manually. And it's impenetrable. So what? That's it? We sit back and let the machine destroy this creature? Can you hear that? What do we do? I'm coming, Ant. I'll bring power packs for the rover and the drone knight. We will get back in this fight. The machine is unstoppable. So are we. Use that giant brain of yours, Professor. There has to be something. There is something. Something missing. There are no schematics for the bottom of the mining machine. Ant! have a mission for your fish. There might be a way to override the backup power from underneath the machine. I need Jeffrey to find out. Jeffrey, you're a hero, and you need it once again. Go under. Get it? Under. Ant, is it working? Uh, he's getting in the zone. Where'd he go? He's under the machine. I'm getting pictures. Yes. Ah, uh, there. There's an opening, but it's small. Well, I'm small. Do you think I'd fit? Hmm, maybe. It's two-thirds of the way from the front. You sure about this, Ant? Absolutely. I'm the only one who'll fit. And if I don't do this, the rig will be destroyed. I'll get Mom and Dad back in the game. We'll do everything we can to buy you time. Which way? Turn right. You're looking. 
looking for a hatch. It's a dead end. Your other right. Right. I knew that. Quickly. Ecosystem. I've got the panel off. Great. Now just reach in and disconnect the power coupling. I can't reach it. I can't fit inside. Oh, Fontaine was right. My head is too big. You tried, Ant. Get out of there. No. My head will fit. Just. Not with the rebreather mask. And do not take off your mask. Remember what I said about listening to instructions? Yes, but I also remember what you said about some things being irreplaceable. <gasps> and side. <laughs> Ant, your head may be abnormally large, but you use it well. In a week, we'll have a marine reserve in place here, totally protected. Uh, don't worry. We'll be moving into another mining zone. You don't sound too unhappy, Mr. Alba. Well, I'm now the man whose machine didn't swallow one of the rarest life forms on Earth. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. I expect you'll do a far more thorough investigation of your next site. Because if anything else is threatened by your mining, we will be there. Oh, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I think the Reef wants to say thank you. Is that a happy bloop? From a purely scientific perspective, I'd say that is a very happy bloop. I don't care what it was. How many people get to duet with a coral reef? Give it a try. Hey, it replied! We could form a band! No, no you couldn't. Bioluminescent bacteria feels like amazing. I've never seen them in these concentrations before. And they go on for miles and miles. They glow and they feel like slime. I love them. Strange. Ant? Totally. But what can you do? Ah! <sighs> Sorry. Slept. Normally, all of this would be eaten. Ugh. Not by me. No, 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 no! Ah! Slipped. <laughs> Let's go see why the fish in Taiwan aren't hungry. Take us forward slowly, Fontaine. Huh. No fish. You mean there are low concentrations? He means none. 
There are no fish on sonar within five kilometers. Well, the smaller ones wouldn't show up on sonar. No, the fish. All the fish are just gone. The ocean is empty. My family are explorers. We have been for generations. While others look up to the stars, we know there are an infinite number of things that shine in the darkness below. There are things lurking in the seas that long ago vanished into myth. My family are explorers, and we explore the deep. Taiwanese fishermen sound frustrated. There are no fish to catch. Very unusual. Our instruments show volcanic activity on the seabed, Ant. Maybe that's producing poisonous gases. Uh, I'm not reading any toxins. Theory number one just crashed and burned. And I don't have a theory number two. I can see algae, larval shrimp, the occasional nematodes. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet here. Just no fish to eat it. It's okay, Jeffrey. Come on in. The water's fine. Right. Let's see how deep this problem goes. I'll take this down. It's okay, Mom. I've got this. Are you sure? You've never piloted below a thousand meters before. You said I needed more piloting hours. The depth should be part of my practice. Mom, if Fontaine is driving, could you get Jeffrey and maybe make him a little seatbelt? Bye, Aunt. Hey, wait for me! Most fish live in the top sunlight zone, so let's try below 200 meters. What if the twilight zone is empty too? Then we're in very strange territory indeed. And you should be able to see fish here that have adapted to low light. No, nope, they're staying away. Maybe they just don't like you. Or there's some major fish party that we haven't been invited to and everyone else has tickets. I'll admit, it's a long shot. Come back inside, Ant. We're going deeper. Okay, we're below a thousand meters. Welcome to the midnight zone. Around 180 atmospheres of pressure are squeezing against the Aranax right now. Fontaine, slow, steady moves, please. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh, come to port. Three degrees, Fontaine. I saw it too. Look. Kill the interior lights. Anglerfish? It's possible, but many species use bioluminescence down here. At least it's something. Nice to see you guys! So we do have fish in the midnight zone. Whoa! Ah! What happened? Outside temperature rising. Volcanic thermal vents. Stay clear. Trying. Gently. Spectins, my remote diagnostics picked up multiple alarms. It's okay, Professor. We're handling it. Are you really at 190 atmospheres? Boiling water rising fast enough to pick up pieces of seabed. I've never seen vertical currents this strong. Mom! It's okay, Fontaine. I've got this. Thermal vents in the midnight zone are no place for a driving lesson. <sighs> Thanks. So, if all the fish seem normal down deep, then the problem is up here, right? I've got something on sonar. A large object. Another submarine? No, it's not solid. But what is it? You're the marine biologist. You tell us. Is that every fish in the area altogether? I told you there was a fish party we weren't invited to. Coming to full stop. I need pictures here. <sighs> totally bizarre. What are they all looking at? I have to see this up close. Fontaine, take over. You'll be fine. Very, very 
very strange. They don't even notice me. They're turning to port now. What's glowing? Uh, I'm not sure. Moving closer. Just be very careful, Keiko. Fish are letting me brush them aside like they don't care. There's something moving in the center. A creature? About half the size of the rover. But so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Oh, it's a pretty woody creature. It's just cuddly woody. Woody woody. Okay, that's uncomfortable. Mom, can you hear me? Keiko? Uh, you okay? Talk like an adult if you can hear me, okay? Oh, pretty. Her vital signs are fine. Pulse normal, blood pressure normal, but she's not responding to us. It's like she's in a trance. Are you reading me, Keiko? Uh, Mom's still controlling her night. That's good, I suppose. Fish keep getting drawn to the light, like they're hypnotized. I've checked everything in our database. Nothing matches this. Bioluminescent nerves are used to attract prey to eat, right? Well, um, yes. Right now, Keiko is prey. I'm going to get her. Dad! Hey! You might need these. Mom's welding goggles. They'll cut out most of the creature's light. Good thinking. I'll bring her back. Don't worry. Is it possible that those geysers of warm water forced this thing up from the midnight zone without it disintegrating? It's not unprecedented. For example, sperm whales go down and back. They're strong enough to withstand the pressure difference. It's changing course. Fish up here have never seen a bioluminescent lure. It doesn't need to hunt. Fish come to it. And Professor, bioluminescence attracts fish, not people. Oh, but light affects people too, Fontaine. We get vitamin D from sunlight. Their sunburn and strobe lights can make people ill. I still think it's hypnotism. Remember when I put you under? For five minutes you thought you were a penguin. <laughs> what? You will forget I said anything. Switching on the rover's infrared camera. Good. We can't afford to see the creature's visible light spectrum. Quills to Keiko. Can you hear me? Got her! Yes! Good job, All Dad! Right. I... I can see... Dad? Dad, what's happening? No, no, no! Don't do it! Who's the pretty one? Yeah, it's you. It's not me. It's you who's the pretty one. <laughs> can't get mom and dad away from that glow. They're never coming back. Dad, talk to us. Coochie, coochie, coo. <laughs> the rover's remote control system. We can bring it back. Yes! <laughs> I love it when a plan comes in. <gasps> no! Dad just overrode the remote. think this is a good idea? Two knights are stronger than one. Maybe we can grab Mom and drag her back. Then worry about the rover. How do we see? We don't. We can't afford to. We'll rely on instruments. 
You know how I'm often critical of your harebrained ideas? So often. <sighs> I've got nothing better. I'll take that. Jeffrey, I'm leaving you in charge. I have complete faith in you, Captain. Turn on your sonar. Uh, I knew that. Activating stealth mode, too. I'm keeping a low profile. Only for radar. He can still see you. Okay, the fish just changed direction. Again. Is it lost? Is that what's going on? even looking at us. Wait, the cloud has stopped moving. Something's happening. The creature's coming. It's a gigantic anglerfish. What's it doing up here? It's heading towards you. Uh, but I'm undercover. I'm in stealth mode. Why me? Am I the fish mind reader? I don't know. Okay, staying calm. You're my backup if it tries to eat me. You got me, right, Fontaine? Kinda. Just don't move. Uh... What do you think it's doing? It seemed to be lost, but now it's staring at you. Like it's found something. Well, I am very charismatic. To a fish? Jeffrey thinks so. Of course he does. Just don't move a muscle, Mr. Charisma. Am I allowed to breathe? I'd prefer you didn't. I can't stand this! It's like it's sizing me up! Thinking, will I take a bite of arm or leg? They both look so good. Oh, why was I cursed with being so appealing to fish? One of the world's great mysteries. Okay, I'm gonna move aside. Slowly. Not smart, but that's so you. It's moving with you. But why? <sighs> Just go away! You shouldn't even be here. Go home! Wait a minute. Ant, disengage stealth mode. Are you crazy? What for? Just trust me. I hope you know what you're doing. I hope so too. It's swimming away. But why? I'm still food. It was attracted to the Shadow Knight's stealth glow. It's almost identical to its own. Maybe it thinks you're related. That's it. Come on. And? Loves that mirror. Eh, she won't mind. Now, I need you to follow behind me in the air next. We'll use a claw arm to grab mom and dad. Great idea, except I can barely see anything on the infrared monitors through all those fish. It would be like picking a needle out of a haystack. Just follow me. I'll start leading that thing down, back to where it belongs. Once we get deeper, some of those fish won't be able to take the pressure, and they'll start to back off. That's when you grab the rover with the claw. At those depths, it'll be harder for me to steer the ship and maneuver the arm. I know, but it's the best harebrained idea I've got. Are you up to it? As long as it gets Mom and Dad back, that's all I care about. Me too. Stay close to me. I'll try. Hang in there, Dad. This will work, Mom. Trust me. Hey, slow drivers! Move! Coming through! Fear left! Look out! Okay, there you are. All right, fish. Who is this? Like what you see? So far, so good, Fontaine. Keep it smooth. Come on, that's it. Let's just get you home. Come deeper. Okay, entering the midnight zone. A lot of these fish won't be able to handle the pressure here. They're leaving! But you keep coming, big guy. I've got a clean visual. Uh, Ant? How deep are you going? As deep as I have to. Ant, we didn't discuss this. The rover can go right to the very bottom, but not the Aranax, and definitely not the Knights. My Knight is stronger than you think. And you're not as strong as you think. Maybe, but home for this guy's down deep. 
In the midnight zone. Not my favorite zone to drive in. You can do it, Fontaine. <sighs> Gentle moves. Take it easy. Uh, huge pressure here. Getting really hard to move. I'm reading 219 atmospheres. 219 times normal and... I don't want to think about it. Our friend is feeling fine. For him, it's like a walk in the park. I think it's time. It's your turn now, Fontaine. Come on. I'm being gentle. Okay. Pressurizing the moon pool room. Equalizing with the midnight zone pressure. Engaging claw arm. Contact. This is your plan. Are you sure the claw arm is stronger than the rover? Um, when I say plan, it's really more of a shot in the dark. And you're telling me this now? Ah! Thermal vents here! I can't hold this for long! Then we'll have to be quick. It's time for part two! It, please. No. Ah, pretty. Oh no. And don't do this. Snap out of it, please. Who's a cutie, pretty? Oh, you're so cute. Don't leave me here alone. Warm and fuzzy, wuzzy, cuddle, wowy. Right. No one else can do this. Up to me. No! Look out, Ant! So much for gentle moves. I'm not letting go. Now or ever! What's happening? Okay, Dad. I need you to grab Mom, but whatever you do, don't open your eyes. Okay. What? Where am I? Oops! Sorry about that, Mr. Fish! And don't look at it! Fontaine, what just happened? Don't worry about it. Dad, I need you to get Mom. Right. Do exactly what I say, and remember to not open your eyes. When I say, I need you to clamp down with the rover's arms. Gently, I'll direct you. Straight ahead. Get ready. Get ready. A little to the left. Right. Okay, Mom. Everything's all right. Except... Ant! It's coming right for you! Where is it? To your left! <laughs> the mirror! Oh, no! It's diving, Ant! You did it! It's following all of its reflections down! Safe travels, big guy. Come back to the Aranax. The fish are safe now. So is the amazing hypnotist. Dad, don't open the canopy. The pressure is too strong. Thanks for that. I feel like I've just woken up from the nicest dream. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. Do you think that is the creature's mother? Well, there's a definite family resemblance. Family reunions are a good thing. He's back home now. Let's hope he stays down there. You guys did very well. We should let Fontaine pilot more often. Thanks. Well, that'll be up to Jeffrey. 
Huh? He's captain now. Gee, you fall into one trance and you miss so much. It's okay, Captain Jeffrey. The good news is, you'll never have to see the scary fish again. Bad news is, you still have to see Ant. Apparently, that was humor, Jeffrey. Fontaine! What is it? Our least favorite attention-seeking showman, Devil Daniels. Ugh. Behold, loyal viewers. My underwater drone camera recently discovered an ancient Viking shipwreck laden with treasure. A good day to be Devil Daniels, adventurer, monster hunter, man of action. Phony, self-centered, man of annoyance. It's hidden deep within the hydrothermal vents in the North Atlantic, known as Loki's Castle. But only I know exactly where. The local government have wisely entrusted me, Devil Daniels, with the task of raising the treasure. Devil Daniels? Trusted with something priceless and fragile? That's pretty much the worst idea ever. Time to call the Monster Hunter. Fun times. Ah, William Necton! Mr. Daniels, we'd like to help you raise that Viking treasure. <laughs> And why would a charismatic solo adventurer like me need help? Because we have experience with this sort of delicate operation. And how do I put this? We're worried you'll turn an incredible ancient ship into little broken pieces of ancient ship. Uh, do they call me Devil Daniels the Clumsy? No. I'm Devil Daniels, treasure hunter. At least I am this week. Daniels, look out! Is that a threat, Fontaine? <gasps> Mad Madeline! That's right! And there's nothing you can do, because us pirates is smarter than you! Police, my fish is smarter than you. Why, you little... Forgettable time treasure nonsense! It belongs to Captain Hammerhead now! <laughs> My family are explorers. We have been for generations. While others look up to the stars, we know there are an infinite number of things that shine in the darkness below. There are things lurking in the seas that long ago vanished into myth. My family are explorers, and we explore the deep. Stand by while you kidnap someone. What? They say you found the treasure. You want Devil Daniels? <laughs> How do you met him? People are more important than treasure, even Daniels. <laughs> no lads, <lot> for me. <laughs> Excuse me. I got plunder too. What do you know? Plunder. Can we track the Dark Orca? No. Their sonar evasion technology is too effective. Well, we may not know exactly where the treasure is, but we do know it's somewhere within Loki's castle. Setting a course there now. Uh, Mr. Hammerhead, excuse me. Look, if this isn't going to be about me rescuing the treasure, perhaps we could focus on the antagonistic relationship between you and the Nectons. What? Man of action brings arch enemies face to face in mammoth underwater confrontation. Get him out of here! They've already got me old plans for the Nectars! Get that treasure now! And load it up quick if you want to earn your one percent share! Loki's castle covers a large area. We could be searching for days. Can we track those traces of diesel fuel the Dark Orca's always leaking? Analyzing the water outside. There! Paraffins, naphthalines, and alkyl benzene. All the elements found in diesel. Follow that trail! Careful! A single piece of that treasure gets left behind. So do you! Huh? 
Heads up, Captain. The Aranax is on its way. Perfect. They're doing just what we want them to do. Everyone clear on the plan? You board the Orca and grab Daniels. I return him to the Aranax. I disable the Orca's propellers to hold it until the authorities arrive. And I'll sit here piloting just because it's Fontaine's turn to have fun. We're not having fun, Ant. We're on a mission. The most fun mission ever. Uh... Not helping Fontaine. You'll need my help after all. Autopilot on. Size in the Orca Moon Pool. Hmm. You don't look so smart. I'm coming, Mom. At least I've got a good vantage point on the treasure. Huh? Oh, well done, Nickens. You opened the door. Um, guys, Hammerhead's on the Aranax. He's what? Our ship, Hammerhead. Oh, I don't think so, Miss Necton. In fact, I think it could use a new name. He's calling it the Hammerhead. Too modest. I like it, Captain. Sounds strong. We'll show you strong, Hammerhead. And will. Ah! What the pleases are they doing? Nicktons, get off my dark orca! Your dark orca. Not anymore. Ned, call the guard! Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Stop right there. Finn! We got the Nectons. Captain, the guards say they've apprehended the... What the... <laughs> To, to the point where I'm clearly outnumbered. Ah, Fontaine, my favorite Nectin. Where'd you put my crew? The brig. We don't have a brig. A dark, dirty room with no windows that smelled of old, dead things? Ah, that's the kitchen. Where's Devil Daniels? I don't know. Probably somewhere he can't be heard. He got pretty annoying pretty quickly. Yeah, he does that. Don't worry, I'll find him. Loose wire. It does that. Ant, I need to figure out how to work this heap. See if there's a manual. Is this the end of Devil Daniels? In prison without a glimmer of hope. When suddenly a daring rescue by my favorite Nectar. I can unrescue you just as easily if you keep talking. Nectar! What do you think you're doing? Surrender now, and we may decide to leave your precious home in one piece! That treasure doesn't belong to you or your pirates, Hammerhead. You think you're gonna take me treasure away? Do I have to remind you about your treasure, Nectar? I know you keep something rare and valuable in your safe. And soon, it'll be mine. You wanna play the hard way? Let's play the hard way! Will, what if Hammerhead gets his hands on the Chronicle of the Deep? I've upgraded the security system. Nobody can get into that safe. 
<laughs> Watch and learn, fish. There's no safe in the world that Mad Madeline can't crack. But there's no safe in the world that Mad Madeline can't crack. Hmm. Maybe I don't have to crack it. Maybe I can get them to open it for me. All I need is a bargaining chip. Come here, you. Huh? We need to find an advantage. I've already found one. What's that? A list of every type of torpedo on board. Find something that won't damage our home. I already have. It's called the Goober. We're under attack! The Goober? Those scoundrels! Johnny boy, return fire! Return and fire, Captain! And, uh, Captain, this sub's got nothing. No torpedoes, no lasers, no well-trained sharks. But, but how do they take whatever they want and destroy anyone in their path? Maybe they don't, but with our weapons, they can now. <laughs> Turn! Retreat! Yes! Gooped him again! <laughs> Attention, everyone! Your director is here! Devil Daniels discovers ancient treasure, gets captured by a horde of ruthless pirates, escapes imprisonment, and arrives just in time to save the day! All we need is... an explosion! No! What torpedo was that? Ah, the squid anchor! <gasps> you give rescuing people a bad name. We'll be as good as blind in that cloud. We are not losing our home. to the fact that you're about to be captured. Who's the smartest one now? The human! That's who! I don't want to leave the orca and that treasure behind! <gasps> Stop now! <laughs> no! <laughs> Sorry, Captain. The reverse thrusters on the orca never worked that well. Yeah, or at all. Are these leaks normal? Maybe a bit worse than normal. You have to admit, this is a great cliffhanger! Do you have a welding gun? Nope. What do you use when there's a leak? Is anyone else worried that the pirates could get away? Not much excitement without our adversaries. Daniels! I was just thinking we needed to up the stakes. When we get out of here, you are going to answer for this. Answer for what? My only crime is my commitment to great entertainment. Perfect. Because this will be very entertaining. You, you can't do this! I'm the director! You're deluded. <laughs> This is perfect! Danny boy, force the Dark Orca down towards the lava! <gasps> Our crew are still on board! And Finn! Finn loves the heat! I'm not gonna fry them, 
Just make him uncomfortable enough to surrender. Oh, Nectons! The orca might be colder and steelier than you're used to. I thought you might appreciate a little bit of heat. <laughs> Hammerhead, what are you doing? This is crazy. Crazy? When you've got treasure, you're eccentric. Call me when you're ready to surrender. Will, we have to get free of these cables. I'm on it. I'll cut through them with the knife. And come with me to open the Orca Moon Pool. Did you think someone just left food in your tank? Come out, fish. Mad Mytaline's got food for you. You like food, don't you? Cut us loose. Open the moon pool, Ant. Hmm. Oh, no, you don't, Nectar. Guards, get out there and stop him. What's wrong? You don't have internal cooling systems in your suits? What, what are you doing? Get out there and stop him! We can't. It's too hot, Captain. We're clear! Mom, Dad, I have a plan to get us back on the Aranax. I want our ship and our treasure back now! I think I can help with that. They're fish. They would give up a whole submarine of treasure for a fish, would they? I don't know, Captain. They're so good-natured. I can't relate to them at all. Hammerhead! Nectars, we were just about to call you. <laughs> it's over. We have your fish! Jeffrey! Surrender to you! Because if you don't, we destroy the treasure. <laughs> the Nectars would never. <gasps> you're you're bluffing. You might sacrifice one coin on a bluff, but you never. <laughs> oh! Nectars, stop this madness! And. Hammerhead isn't agreeing to our demands. Feel free to continue this madness. Goodbye, precious treasure. No! All crew, get out there! Don't let them destroy my treasure! Alone. Friendless once more, apart from the thousands of internet followers. Come on, we're leaving. I was just in the middle of a pathetic but somewhat touching monologue. Mind if I finish up? Ugh, now! <laughs> Don't let it fall into that lava! They're getting away! It's okay. Daddy boy has got him covered. They 
left you to guard. Um, yeah? <laughs> You go guard something else. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, Devil Daniels frees himself and the Lectons from the Pirate Horde. How exciting was that? We know about the treasure. We would never destroy historic artifacts. That treasure was all fake, planted by you to make your show more exciting. Bold dash. Fake ducats. Fake pieces of eight. They're not even from the right time period. Ugh, boo-hoo. So what? It's classic drama. But you can't prove any of this. <laughs> I'm too smart to ever be caught. Maybe we can get your loyal viewers to weigh in on that. We caught all of that on fish cam. Making a phony documentary about a phony treasure is fraud, Devil Daniels. So, we're delivering a phony treasure hunter to the authorities. Now that's a happy end. I smell a hole. <laughs> I've reclaimed the Orca, and I've rescued enough Viking treasure to buy ten of those fancy soaps. <laughs> um. Actually, you don't. What? You're not gonna like this, Dad. <gasps> All Nectus, report to the bridge. Priority one. What is it? A distress call from the tiny resort island of Tartaruga. It's about to be hit by a tsunami. We'll never reach them in time. The name of Get to the boats! Oh no! It's too late! Huh? What happened to the wave? It's like it went through us. Intriguing. Waves don't just go through islands. I know. And I realize this may not be of any interest to you. I mean, technically, nothing actually happened. Are you kidding? Your entire island was completely not hit by a tsunami. That's totally worth investigating. <laughs> Nectin family, set sail! Huh? Is this something we're doing now, Ant? You say a catchphrase and we just leap into action without any discussion? Aw, oh, come on, Fontaine. You know we're gonna check this one out. Governor, we're coming to inspect your unsinkable island. Yes! My family are explorers. We have been for generations. While others look up to the stars, we know there are an infinite number of things that shine in the darkness below. There are things lurking in the seas that long ago vanished into myth. My family are explorers, and we explore the deep. It must have gone over the wave. How can an island go over a wave? Well, it didn't go under it, Glaucus. It didn't go through it. So, what other possibility is left? According to the Chronicle of the Deep, the final piece of the Athenacron is hidden on a moving island. We're not the only ones with this knowledge, Nereus. You're right, Tethys. Proteus will be drawn to this. He already holds the other two pieces of the Athenacron. If he were to get his hands on the final piece... Then he can do the unthinkable, and everything we've guarded against for thousands of years will be threatened. If he can find Lemuria, then he can free the Terra. And use it to control the world. Or destroy it. Right. Well, I suppose I should go make sure that doesn't happen. Um... What is it? 
We should have reached the island of Tartaruga, but it isn't here. What do you mean? Look, this is a satellite map. We're right here. The island isn't. And take a look. Up Periscope. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not up there. Whole islands don't just go missing. Well, I'm telling you, it's not up. Ah! And? What is it? An eye! An eye land? No! There's a giant eye! Huh? What is it, Dad? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Narius, a whole island is gone! I know. Do you know where? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Aha! Look! But if that's Tartaruga, it's miles away from where it's supposed to be. It's moved. It hasn't moved. The maps are wrong, or, or something. Either way, it must be the island. Nectin family, set sail! Huh, I think this is something that should catch on. We can't take the Aranax any closer. The shallows will extend too far. The solar ski's ready to fire? Uh, fire? You're coming with me, Narius. It would be nice to see you surprised for once. Firing in three, two... Hold on to your beard, old man. One! Keiko, do you remember any mention of Tataruga having a large sea cave? No. So, what's that? Wow. Can we see what's inside? Not until after we talk to the governor. Sorry we're a bit late. You've moved. Uh, we've what? It's true. Your island is not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> but that's impossible, uh, isn't it? Governor, I don't remember any mention of Tartaruga having a large sea cave. Tartaruga doesn't have a large sea cave. We're gonna explore the cave, aren't we? Yes! Spelunking! I love spelunking! No, you don't love spelunking. You don't love exploring caves. You just love saying the word spelunking. I'll go back to the Aranax and get the spelunking gear so we can spelunk. <laughs> spelunking! Hmm, it is a good word. Ugh. Now, I think you should come and take a look at something, Governor. You're saying you've never seen this before. No, I, I think I'd remember this. If this has never been seen before, then the opening to this cave must have been exposed after the wave came. It's as if the whole island has risen. Extraordinary. Ooh, what's that? It's old Akkadian, this language. We're talking about 4,000 years old. But there's no way the Akkadian Empire made it all the way to this island on the other side of the world. Which means... This island came to them. <sighs> the island moved from the Mediterranean Sea to the North Atlantic Ocean? The island has moved recently. We know that. If these vast caves run through the entire island, it could be hollow and light. It could be floating. Maybe it was fixed to an underwater atoll and the tsunami dislodged it. That's possible. I think we better get back up there and let your resort know the island may be unstable. I want to take a closer look at your island from underwater, but I'll need the rover. I'll come with you, William. I may have a theory on all this. 
Okay. You two keep exploring the caves, but keep your communicators and homing beacons on at all times. Be safe. We'll see you soon. Why can't I have a catchphrase? It's not how real life works. You can't just yell, set sail, and expect everyone to leap into action. Well, every adventure movie I've ever seen proves that wrong. Ant, movies aren't real life. I refuse to believe that. <coughs> um, Ant? What? Someone else is spelunking in here. Hmm. Hello? Hello, Anteus. Ah! Proteus! I should have known to expect you. You are no doubt here for the same reason as I. Spelunky? What? I'm here to spelunk. Is that why you're here too? Are you a sinister, traitorous, evil villain and a spelunking enthusiast? Do you know what he's talking about? Not often. Do not try to fool me! I know you are here for the final piece of the Ephemicron. You will not find it before me. Wait, the other piece of the Ephemicron is here? And I will make it whole. What's happening? The island. It's sinking. The kids. Ant, Fontaine, do you read? Come in. Oh! Huh? No! Ant! Fontaine! No! Help me! We can secure this to the... No. I seek something far more valuable than your sister. You! Jeffrey! Fetch! Just one more. You're in here somewhere. <laughs> Why aren't they responding? Governor, evacuate the resort. Of course. Incredible. The entire island is floating after all. Yes, but by the looks of it, not for long. Keiko, the island is... Sinking, I know. But the kids are still inside the cave. The entrance is sunk. I can't get to them, Will. We're coming. <sighs> Fontaine, it's time to wake up. Please. Fontaine, if you don't wake up right now, I'm gonna have to give you mouth to mouth. And neither one of us wants that. Uh, uh. Huh? Ow! You headbutted me! You can't just go around whacking your abnormally large head into mine, especially after I saved your life. You saved my life? Don't try to change the subject. We were talking about how your abnormally large head. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's okay, weapon head. Hey, if you're doing unusually affectionate displays of gratitude, I should tell you that I had help. Jeffrey... I'm not gonna hug your fish. Okay. Speaking of your fish, he's right next to us. Yeah? We weren't sitting in water a minute ago, were we? <gasps> no. Aunt Fontaine, do you read me? Mom, what's happening? The island is sinking! Well, that would explain some things. Mom, Dad, that's not the worst thing. Proteus is in here somewhere. Proteus? Keiko, everyone's getting clear of the island. Excellent. Good luck, Governor. Will! Let's go get our kids. Can you hear that? It sounds like a wave! No! Out of the water! Fontaine, what's happening? 
What's happening? Not now, Mom. Climb! <sighs> Why is there a wave inside a cave? Ask questions later. What about Jeffrey? It's water. He's a fish. Hold on! Look, past the water. What is that? Martin, we're at the entrance. We're coming in. No, Dad, get away from there. What do you mean? What? I don't know what it is, but something huge is heading for the cave entrance. Huh? <gasps> Is that what I think it is? Amazing! Yes, I mean I suspected. But still, seeing it like this... You thought this was a possibility and you kept it to yourself? What was I supposed to say? Uh, William, Keiko, yeah, now about Tartaruga. It's possible that it's not an island at all, but is in fact a giant turtle. The island isn't sinking. It's diving. Go after it, Will. Ant, this chamber is going to be full of water in seconds. We have to get out of here now. Jeffrey! I think he wants us to follow him. Ant, have faith in the fish. <gasps> Jeffrey, come here, you magnificent fish. Finally! Parodius. Shh. I have a plan, William. Get in front of it. Stop! said you were the one. Perhaps the Ephemicron can only be made whole in your hands. Huh? Hmm. If you think I'm gonna help you, you're absolutely right. He is? Yeah, Ant's great at this stuff. Take the pieces, Ant. Ant, dive! Uh <laughs> How long can you hold your breath, little Nectars? <gasps> That's right. There's nowhere to run. That's right. There's nowhere to run. It's over, Proteus. Ha! Huh. You think this is over? You think you won? They are not worthy of Lemuria's power. I will find it. And I will take what's there! No! He's getting away! Forget about him! We need to get out of here! Everyone back in the rover! 
Jeffrey! you have the Athenacron, I think it's time you knew the truth. What truth? Do you know why your family has always been pulled towards the ocean? Why every generation of Nectans have explored the seas? Do you know why you search for Lemuria so tenaciously? Because you are from there. Your ancestors were Lemurian. We've been searching for home. And now that you have the Ephemacron, you should have the means to find it. Thank you. 